Why we should never question the will of God. This is a great sin of pride. When we ask why, it is because we want to get an explanation. It is most important to understand something when things are not clear. It is important for us to know what we need to know, this being a very normal thing in our humanity, especially when we are dealing with other human beings. God is the supreme being, He is our Creator, He is immutable, and His decrees are irrefutable. Whatever happens in our lives is either guided or allowed by His will. Therefore, if we learn to live in accordance with the will of God, we can be sure to be walking in the path of holiness. On the other hand, if we start questioning the will of God, we must understand that we offend Him, since God is perfect in His ways, and there is nothing that we could suggest that would change His will. When things go wrong in our lives, it is our fault most of the time. But let us remember what God says in Isaiah 45, verse 7. I found the light and create darkness. I bring prosperity and create disaster. I, the Lord, do all these things. Those words should keep us mute when we have the temptation to question God about His decrees. There is no negotiation with God. We must accept His will. God, in His goodness, has provided prayer as a humble way to present our needs to Him, provided everything is in accordance with His will. We can ask, but never question God. It is a sin of pride. It is the same as disapproving His commandments. In many cases, we forget about the goodness of God. We don't meditate on why He gives us life why He sustains it, why He feeds us, why He surrounds us with the love of the family, why He cares for us, why He loves us constantly with every beat of our hearts, why He descended from heaven to suffer for our sins in order to achieve our redemption. In summary, we are indebted to God. There is no way in this world or in the other to repay him for his goodness. So, when God decides to send us some trial or infirmity, or when our life is ending, it is time to accept his divine will. God prunes us in order to purify us through our sufferings. All his decisions are perfect. This is why we must live in accordance to his divine will. Isaiah 64, verse 8 Yet you, Lord, are our Father. We are the clay, you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. God wants to mold us constantly. From a vessel of clay, He wants to create a perfect chalice for His precious blood, a radiant temple of His Spirit, a throne of His divine will. For this reason, we must surrender totally to Him and let Him do whatever He wants. Abraham, being an old man, was asked by God to sacrifice his only son. He accepted the will of God and prepared to sacrifice Isaac. But the Lord accepted his submission as a great act of faith. Therefore, he stopped the sacrifice of Isaac by the intervention of an angel, and Abraham was rewarded becoming the father of the faith and the father of all nations. Job was a righteous man who had everything, beautiful family, riches, and good health. But God decided to put him to the test, and he lost family, riches, possessions, and became a leper. Because Job said, God has given, God has taken away. He accepted the will of God, and in the end, he was justified. Let us adore God for his divine will, that he allowed us to know Jesus Christ, his only Son, and that with our faith we shall see his glorious face one day 
in eternity. Glory to God.